pupils. This is an English lesson for Form 2. And then the lesson is a non-textbook base. It is for Form 2 and the theme is Health and Environment. So today's topic is Environmental Sustainability. Let's look at the learning standards. So we have main skills and also complementary skills. Listening 1.1.1 Understand independently the main ideas in simple longer text on the range of familiar topics. And then we have reading 3.1.3 Guess the meaning of unfamiliar words from clues provided by other known words and by context on the range of familiar topic. Then we have 4.1.1 one, explain simple content from what they have read. Now for the complementary skills. We are speaking 2.1.1, ask about and explain key information from simple text. And then speaking 2.1.2, ask for and respond appropriately to simple suggestions. And lastly, writing 4.2.3, produce a plan or draft of two paragraphs or more and modify them in response to feedback or independently. Let's start off the lesson by looking at this word and then you have to try to form new words using the letters in the word. So here we have R E C Y C L I N G Recycling Try to form new words using the letters. Example, you can write cycle, C Y C L E. Dear pupils, how many words did you manage to form from this word recycling? Let's look at the answers. For two letter word, you can uh, find the word in. And then for three letter words, you have ice, icy, lie, cry, kneel, jean, ride. And then four letter words, ring, rice, nice, green, line, grey, girl. And then for the five letter words, you have cling, cycle, girly, lying, relics, and liner. And then for the six letter words, we have cleric, nicely, circle, cringe, crying, linger, and clergy. And then for the seven letter words, we have cycling, relying. And then for the eight letter words, we have glycerin. There are actually many more words. Okay, you can keep uh, trying to form new words. Let's go to the next activity. Uh, let's look at the picture of recycling bins here. So there are four recycling bins. Can you name the types of waste for these bins? Let's look at the answer for the first one. It is glass. The second one, it is metal. The third is paper. And the last is plastic. So green is for glass. Red is for metal. And uh, yellow or orange is for paper and blue is for plastic. Recycling bins around the world. There are many types of recycling bins and some have very interesting shapes. This is the last activity in the introduction. So there are interesting recycle bins or recycling bins around the world. So can you name the country where they are from? Let's look at picture one. The answer is Scotland. Second picture, Singapore. Third picture from USA or America. And the fourth, it is from Egypt. The fifth is from Brazil and the last is from Thailand. Pupils, now we are doing the listening lesson. Do you know this famous person?
now you are going to listen to how much food do you waste in this program Neil and Dan discuss how food waste could cause the end of the world and who's doing something about it and they teach you six items of useful vocabulary so the first question is how much of the world's waste is wasted each year answer there are three options here so a a half b a third and a quarter so what do you think is the correct answer dear pupils before you listen to the audio let's look at the vocabulary find the meanings of these words or phrases so you have six here number one waste number two leftovers number three landfill number four household name number five infrastructure and number six abundance listen to the program to find out the answer so here you are going to listen to bbc learning english it is six meter english how much food do you waste this is a download from bbc learning english to find out more visit our website six minute english from bbc learning english Hello and welcome to 6 Minute English, the show that brings you an interesting topic, authentic listening practice and six new items of vocabulary. I'm Dan. And I'm Neil. In this episode, we'll be discussing food waste. Uh, just as soon as... Um... Neil, did you just throw the rest of that apple away? Yeah. Well, it was quite a big one and I couldn't finish it. Neil, you know you shouldn't waste food. Waste, meaning to throw away without consuming or using. Ah, it's only an apple. It's not the end of the world, Dan. Well, that's where you could be wrong, my friend. Let me prove it to you with this week's question. How much of the world's food is wasted each year? A, a half, B, a third, or C, a quarter? Hmm, I'm not sure. I know it's a lot, so I'm going to say A, a half. We'll find out if you're right or not at the end of this show. So, the actual figure is 1.3 billion tonnes of food, which is enough to feed a billion hungry people. Where do you think all this food waste comes from? Well, restaurants, I imagine. I mean, they can't give one customer's leftovers to another. That would be unhygienic. Leftovers are the remains of food which has not been eaten. And while you're right, restaurants are not the main contributor to food waste. Supermarkets. I bet they throw out loads of food once it goes past its sell-by date, or the date which it can be legally sold by. Think closer to home. It's us, isn't it? Yes. In Europe, an incredible 53% of food waste comes from households, which results in 88 million tonnes of food waste a year. And I bet you can't guess what we do with it. I want to say recycle, but I can see from your face, Dan, that it's not. No. Unfortunately, it goes into landfills and decays. A landfill is a place where rubbish is buried. I see, so the food rots, and this causes greenhouse gases, which lead to global warming and climate change. Exactly, and the end of the world. But, remarkably, the European country of Denmark has managed to reduce its food waste by a very significant 25%. That's impressive. How did that happen? They attribute it to a woman called Selina Yule. Hmm, I think I've heard about her. She became a household name in Denmark overnight. A household name is one which everybody knows, and that's right. I thought she was Russian. She is, but I'll let her explain. I, I come from a country where there were food shortages. Back then in Moscow, communism collapsed. We had the collapse of infrastructure. We were not sure that we could get food on the table. And coming to Denmark, seeing this abundance, seeing the supermarkets filled with food. But then I was really shocked to see a lot of food getting wasted. So, Selina grew up in Moscow at a time when there wasn't enough food because of the collapse of infrastructure, meaning the basic systems and services of a society, such as food transportation. Then, when she moved to Denmark, she found an abundance, or more than enough, food. But she saw it being wasted. So she decided to do something about it? Yep. She started a Facebook page in 2008 called Stop Wasting Food. And nine years later, the Danish government credits her for their reduction in food waste. How did she do it? Well, lots of ideas, really. She convinced some supermarkets to stop selling their items in bulk so that people would buy only what they need. 
She's produced a leftovers cookbook and she's working with three governments to set up an education program in schools. Wow, she's a busy woman. So, how about you educate me with the answer to this week's question? Sure. I ask you how much of the world's food is wasted each year? Is it A, a half, B, a third, or C, a quarter? And I said A, a half. And I'm terribly sorry, mate, but you're wrong. The answer is B, a third. Ah, well, it's not as bad as I thought it was, at least. Shall we have a look at the vocabulary then? Yes, let's. First, we had waste. If you waste something, you throw it away or lose it without using it or consuming it. Common things we waste are food, time, money, and energy. We also have some expressions with waste, too. Can you think of one, Dan? Um, oh, a waste of space is an expression which means a thing is completely without value. For example, I am a complete waste of space in the kitchen. I can't cook at all. Next, we had leftovers. Leftovers are the remains of food or a meal which have not been eaten. What do you tend to do with your leftovers, Neil? Oh, I love leftovers. Sometimes I think they taste even better than the original meal. I agree. Pete is a great example. <laughs> Then we had landfill. A landfill is a place where rubbish is dropped and buried. In colloquial English, we might say a dump. Do you ever take your rubbish to the dump, Dan? Not if I can help it. I prefer to recycle as much as possible. I only go to the dump if I have to get rid of a large appliance, such as a fridge. Then we had a household name. To be a household name is to be well known by ordinary people of a particular place or culture. Can you think of a person who's a household name at the moment, Neil? Oh, that's very easy. Donald Trump springs to mind. Everyone must know who he is. Then we had infrastructure. Infrastructure is the basic systems and services of a society, such as electricity supply, trains, and roads. And finally, we had abundance. If you have an abundance of something, you have more than you need. Do you have anything in abundance, Neil? Well, when it comes to my children, I have to have an abundance of patience. <laughs> well, most of the time. <laughs> and that's the end of today's Six Minute English. Please join us again soon. And we're on social media too Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. See you there. Goodbye. Bye bye. Six Minute English from BBC Learning English. Now, the answer for the listening task. So let's look at the vocabulary. The first word is waste. Waste is something you throw away or lose without using or consuming. And then number two, leftovers. Leftovers is the remains of food or a meal which have not been eaten. And the meaning for landfill, it is a place where rubbish is dropped or buried. And then number four, household name. It is a well-known It is well known by ordinary people or a particular place or culture. Next, we have infrastructure. So, infrastructure means the basic system and services of a society. And the last word, abundant, it means more than needed. Here we are. Now we are doing the reading lesson. For the Reading lesson, the first thing is you are going to read a text or an article about a famous person. And then you have to fill in the table here with suitable answers. So you have here name, born, nationality, education and occupation. Selena Jewell, born the 7th of March 1980 in Moscow, Soviet Union is a Russian-Danish activist and graphic designer known for her work in promoting the reduction of food waste. She founded the consumer organization Stop Wasting Food, Danish, Stop Spilled of Mad, in 2008. She wrote the cookbook Stop Spilled of Mad, N. Kozbogmdmir, Stop Wasting Food, a cookbook with more, in 2011 and has written numerous articles on the subject of food waste. In addition to her activism, she worked as a graphic designer and illustrator. Early life and education Selina Jill has a BA from the Danish School of Media and Journalism, formerly known as the Graphic Arts Institute of Denmark. Activism Her experiences with food shortages as a child in Russia during the 1980s inspired her work combating food waste. 
Due to the work of the Stop Wasting Food campaign, Denmark reduced its food waste nationally by 25% in five years, from 2010 to 2015. Selena Jill has received several awards for her activism. In 2013, she won the Nordic Council Environment Prize and the Danish Social Democrats Sven Orkin Prize. In 2014, she was named Dane of the Year by the newspaper Blingsk. She blogs for the Huffington Post and the Danish newspaper Politiken. Don't forget that you have to fit in the table with suitable answers. Let's look at the answers now. Who is this famous person? So her name is Selena Jules. So born will be on March 7, 1980 in Moscow and it is in Soviet Union. Nationality, she's Russian and or Danish. Education, she went to Danish School of Media and Journalism. And her occupation is, she's a food waste activist. The next lesson we will do is speaking. For the speaking lesson, watch this video. The title is Denmark's Food Waste Vigilante. Okay, it is from the BBC News. And here you have the link for the video or you can scan the QR code. What is vigilante? It is a person who tries in an official way to prevent crime or to catch and punish someone who has committed a crime, especially because they do not think that official organizations such as the police are controlling crime effectively. Vigilantes usually join together to form groups. We waste one third of the world's produced food. It is enough to feed a billion hungry people on this planet. Oh, lemon sounds good. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it's just, you know, to fill out this, this hole. Like this? Uh, like a baby? <laughs> <laughs> I come from a country where there were food shortages back there in Moscow, uh, communism collapsed, we had the collapse of infrastructure, we were not sure that we could get food on the table. And coming to Denmark, seeing this abundance, seeing this uh, supermarkets with, with, filled with food, but then, then I was really shocked to see a lot of food getting wasted. She was this um, crazy Russian woman that walked in the door with a crazy idea about stop wasting food. And she's come really far since. She's basically changed the entire mentality in Denmark. Usually we wasted about 80 or 100 bananas every day and afterwards we put the sign on and, and said take me I'm single then we re reduced the, uh, the waste on bananas by 90%. The biggest food wasters in Denmark are the consumers and it's actually in the, the whole Western society in UK in United States the biggest food wasters are ourselves. I have no life, <laughs> basically. I have no life and I have no weekends. I have, uh, yeah. All right. It's disrespectful 
So food waste is basically also the lack of respect for our nature, for our society, for the people who produce the food, for the animals, and the lack of respect for your time and your money because you throw the food away that you've been buying and you waste your time and you waste your money. Now let's look at the task. The task is, what can you do to help the environment? Think of several activities that you can do at home. Record yourself giving an explanation and show it to your teacher and also your classmates. Relations generate about 15,000 tons of waste daily. If this mountain of waste is disposed of properly, then we have little to worry about. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Litter is strewn all over the country, in car parks, empty lots, back lanes, drains, rivers, practically everywhere. The sights are also familiar, the stench is overpowering, yet we display our indifference. Recycling involves the separating of rubbish, metal, glass, plastic and paper. The waste is then taken to collection centers which turn the waste materials into reusable products. At home. I can help in saving the environment by sorting out the recyclables at home and bringing them for recycling like newspapers, old books, magazines, aluminium cans, plastic bottles, cardboards and glass bottles. Instead of sending things to the recycling center I can use glass bottles as bottles to store milk or water, plastic containers from food delivery can be used as boxes to store leftover food, and plastic bottles can be used for growing small plants. There are many ways to recycle, and all I have to do is think creatively. Now, we are doing the writing lesson. Dear students, for the writing lesson, let's look at some useful information that you can use in your uh, writing later on. So, let's look at the first one. There are three key factors when thinking about how to recycle. So it is the three R's. So three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. There are many things that we can recycle, such as plastic bottles, batteries, uh, glass bottles, saying you can recycle aluminum cans, even mobile phones. Look at some information on paper. Paper is separated into following groups. So you have news uh, papers, you have magazines, you have office paper, you have cardboard, you even have phone directories. So you need to deposit used paper at your local recycling center or recycling bank. Most home recycling ban, uh, bins provided by your local council usually accept paper products. Only recycled gum paper is specified such as envelopes and stickers. And then reduce waste paper by cancelling unwanted deliveries or read news online as opposed to buying newspapers. Put a no junk mail please sign on your letterbox to reduce unwanted deliveries. And then reuse paper around the house as scrap paper or packing material. Envelopes can also be reused. Set your printer to print on both sides of the paper. And then the last one is buy recycled paper whenever possible. Now for the recycling etiquette. Recycling can sometimes be confusing and it can be difficult to know whether you're following all the right rules. Improve your recycling efforts by learning some recycling etiquette rules and check out which type of collection is best and why different areas recycle and collect in different ways. So let's look at what's in your rubbish bin. A large percentage of UK households still do not recycle enough and throw everything that they consider rubbish into the ordinary bin. Much of this waste can be recycled and should be disposed of separately to general household waste. So look into this rubbish bin to see how much of the content should actually have been recycled. 
so you have here uh, 35% organic 30% paper 12% construction 9% plastics 6% metal 5% others and 3% glass Recycling facts and figures Recycling is an excellent way of saving energy and conserving the environment Did you know that? One recycled tin can can save enough energy to power a television for 3 hours and then one recycled glass bottle would save enough energy to power a computer for 25 minutes one recycled plastic bottle would save enough energy to power a 60 watt light bulb for 3 hours and 70% less energy is required to recycle paper compared with making it from raw materials more interesting facts so up to 60% of the rubbish that ends up in the dustbin could be recycled the unreleased energy contained in the average dustbin each year could power a television for 5,000 hours the largest lake in the Britain could be filled with rubbish from the UK in 8 months on average 16% of the money you spend on a product pays for the packaging which ultimately ends up as rubbish as much as 50% of waste in the average dustbin could be composted up to 80% of a vehicle can be recycled 9 out of 10 people would recycle more if it were made easier now let's learn how paper is recycled so there are six steps you are looking at first and second the first one paper is taken from the bin and deposited in a large recycling container along with paper from other recycling bins and number two the paper is taken to a recycling plant or recycling center where it is separated into types and also grids and then number three the separated paper is then washed with soapy water to remove inks, plastic film, staples and glue. The paper is put into a large holder where it is mixed with water to create slurry. And then for step number 4, by adding different materials to the slurry, different paper products can be created such as cardboard, newsprint or office paper. Next, the slurry is spread using large rollers into large thin sheets. And number six, the paper is left to dry and then it is rolled up, ready to be cut and sent back to the shops. For the writing task, the topic is how glass is recycled. The first one is writing for low proficiency level. Here are six pictures for the steps in recycling of glass. Study the pictures and complete the sentences with suitable words. For the average proficiency level, here are six pictures for the steps in recycling of glass. Study the pictures and write some sentences for each picture. And for high proficiency level, Write an article for your school magazine about how glass is recycled. Use the pictures to guide you in your writing. Here are the answers. For low proficiency level, this is a task. Here are six pictures for the steps in recycling glass. Study the pictures and complete the sentences with suitable words. So picture one, the answers recycle bin or recycling bin for picture 2 taken and the second answer is factory center or plant for picture 3 the answers are colors and the second one remove for picture 4 answers melted and new for picture 5 sent for picture 6 degrade Average proficiency level, the task is, here are six pictures for the steps in recycling of glass. 
study the pictures and write some sentences for each picture. So the answers would be Picture 1 Consumers throw glass bottles into a recycling bin. The glass bottles are then taken from the bin to a glass treatment or a glass recycling plant. So for plants, you can say uh, recycling center or you can also write uh, factory. For picture 3, the bottles are sorted by color and washed to remove any impurities. Picture 4, next they are crushed and melted. This is followed by molding the liquid glass into new products such as bottles, jars and other decorative uses. For picture 5, the glass bottles are finally sent back to the shops or factories where they are labelled and filled with food items like drinks and jam. And then for number 6, glass does not degrade through the recycling process so it can be recycled again and again. Glass can be recycled 100%. What kind of glass can be recycled? Only clear, green and amber glass can be recycled. First, glass containers are collected at public and private recycling centers. Bottle bins are placed in schools, outside shopping centers and in parks. Next, the bottles are taken to factories. Here they are separated into three main colors, clear, green and amber. Then, the bottles are rinsed in warm water. This is done to remove contaminants. Contaminants cause defects in the new glass containers. After this, the clean glass containers are crushed by a glass processor. The crushed glass is called colored. In the next stage, the crushed glass is melted down. Sand, soda ash and limestone are added to the melted glass. Then the melted glass mixture is heated to about 2800 degrees Fahrenheit to form molten or liquid glass. The molten glass is now ready to be poured into molds of different shapes and sizes. The final products are new glass containers. Why recycle? Recycling saves a lot of energy and natural resources like sand, limestone and soda ash. Recycling is good for the environment as there is less quarrying. It reduces the cost of water disposal. And best of all, recycling means less litter on the earth. Dear pupils, we have come to the end of our lesson for today. Thank you for watching this video. And then do remember to subscribe to my channel. It is called Educator OmniTube. I am Madam Gan, signing off. Bye-bye.